Simper of Cyber Defense weekly updates for September 25th, 2021. Welcome back to Simple Cyber Defense. This week we have an interesting Reddit post where someone was tracked very easily and we're going to go over how they happened and so let's begin my name is carl i'm joined with hi this is Ahmad. and and so what actually did you discover on reddit this week so, so i was flipping through reddit and i found um a gentleman that will and we'll keep the usernames private uh, but I'm pretty sure you can easily find it. Uh, someone was being trolled by another person and, uh, you know, was, was being called out, was being called names and, and he, they were being treated very inappropriately. Uh, and all the, the, uh, the person had, the, per, the troll, all the troll had was a username. There was no photo. There was no uh, correct information on the profile as as far as location or age or, or any of that no, no PII no, you know, was given on their profile yet you go through the video and you see that that person was discovered um, you, and then it was not just discovered he was discovered his location even the use facial recognition software to find out who that person is and then they found out some more information about that person that they found out that he was actually a registered sex offender. And then they found his name, address, location, and all that stuff from that registry. Um, and yeah, and, and I, was, I was really taken aback because I, I, you know, I wanted to find out and how was he discovered? You know, this person was anonymous online. He hid all his information. He, he, and then he also, you know, all the information that was on his profile was incorrect. So with all that, with all these steps that he had taken to say anonymous, how was he discovered? Is that, you know, and, and I, I don't understand. What, what do you think happened there? Okay, so when I reviewed the video, I've noticed a couple of things. The first thing that they said was that they got him on a video chat and that's how they're able to do the facial recognition because with the video chat they took a screenshot and so the question is how would they have gotten that information the mm -hmm. simple thing is basically just simple social engineering and they basically either pretended to be someone that would he would be interested in interacting with or they just lied about themselves and gained his trust back and forth and eventually got him to do a video chat so that's where that's where they're able to get the the uh photo and then be able to, from there do the facial recognition to get his true name and it, i think they got really lucky with him being on the sex offender list so you you said social engineering can you mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit what social engineering is and what are the steps that someone can take to okay. uh, to get information from someone? And also, what are the steps that someone can take to protect themselves from something like that? Yeah. So basically, social engineering is, is a method of trying to gain trust from someone else by pretending that they have either the authority or like uh it's best to give an example like ability maybe you know you yeah try to get somebody to like you so so pretty much even though it's it's a, it's a, the cyber security realm mm -hmm. we're still working or still attacking the human element we're yeah. not attacking yeah. there's no technical elements here yet no not right? for social engineering because they realize that people are the biggest threat or not the biggest threat but the biggest uh vulnerability 
because people can easily be tricked. Like say, for example, you get an email from your bank, except it's not really from your bank. It's from an attacker who created that email to make it look like it's from your bank so that you click on a link and log in and then oops instead of giving your credentials to your bank you're giving it to the attacker so now, they're impersonating your bank or somebody from your bank yeah so in this case this video most likely they were impersonating like a a minor that this mm -hmm. person would want to interact with and so okay. they're saying like yeah i'm 12 years old or 13 years old or whatever the age group that he was interested in and started chatting him up and and then either he initiated the video chat or she or the other person initiated the uh, the uh, chat and then when he got the photo everything was just lined in that way hmm. so the best way i would say to protect yourself against social engineering is to just stop and think like a lot of times these social engineers they try to make things go fast paced because when you're in a rush how well are your judgment how well is your judgment it's not very as well as if you sit that back and think about okay look at the look at this situation something just doesn't seem uh just seem right but if you're in a rush you're like oh well I, I gotta get this done so i'm just gonna click here and like oh crap but you sit there and think about it afterwards like well why did i do that it's because when you're in a rush you're not thinking clearly so a lot of times you just have to stop and just slow down and just think about it the attackers will try to put pressure on you to try to make you go as fast as they want you to because they know the faster you go the less you're likely to think about it and the easier it is for you to fall for their traps hmm. okay well this this is a you know kind of talking about social engineering um if if we look at social engineering as in in this in this context um number one it, to me, it seems like it'd be something that's continuously changing, right? That yeah. the tricks and the tactics are changing. Uh, but also that it, it all, may involve more than one person. So it may, mm -hmm. you may be uh, a target and, and they could use multiple channels to attack that target or to get yeah. or elicit information from that target. Mm -hmm. um, and also it, it may be in person or electronic from behind the, behind the screen. Or right. even all over the phone too. Over the phone, okay. Um, and and kind of to to summarize uh, to summarize what you said here, or to to kind of uh, bullet point the, the 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 principles of social engineering. You had mentioned, you know, uh, uh, like one one of the things that you just mentioned is is urgency, right? Um, and and. It's kind of like, okay, let, let's act quickly because if we don't do this, we're, you know, we're not, you're not going to get the reward and mm -hmm. also you're not going to get to think, but also um, scarcity, right? Uh, scarcity. It's another principle of social, it's another principle mm -hmm. of social engineering where, oh, you know, there is this, this discount is, you know, it's 30%, we're only, or 50%, we're only giving it to 10 people today, you know, so okay. you have to act right now. Or uh, like 10 minutes. <laughs> So like right. Yep. Um, uh, another principle of social engineering that uh, that is also known as authority. You know, somebody mm -hmm. you you get calls or or voicemails from somebody pretending to be the IRS or pretending to be somebody in position of power, um, and and then you can mix that with intimidation, right? If you don't yeah. do this, this will happen. You'll go. And intimidation is another tactic or, the, or another principle of social engineering. Um, and you know. We, we, like we just said, social engineering tactics differ from place to place, from time to time. Um, and, you know, the tactics that can be used against you, like another one can be like, it's, uh, it's called a consensus or social proof, where uh, you will, you know, you will be convinced by the social engineer based on 
uh, kind of like what's normally expected, you know, um, for in society or 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 in your area. Um, another one is 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 familiarity, right? Oh well, you know, your friend down the street did this too, or your neighbor did this, or this guy from this department, you know, that works with you, or this lady did this, so you should. It's okay for you to do it as well. And as human beings, we kind of get coaxed into doing things like this. Yeah. And then uh, another one is trust. You know, if 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 you uh, like, for example, uh, another video that that you sent me, somebody calling and say, "Hey, I'm from the IT department." You know, they spoof the number. Yep. Say, "I'm from the IT department." Well, I trust from I trust anyone from the IT department. They're you know that's their job is to protect my digital mm -hmm. data, uh, and if, if I get a call from a number has, and someone says they're IT, they're automatically trusted, trusted to yeah. do whatever, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So that's, that's another principle. Um, so if, if you notice all of those things that we talked about, we haven't touched a keyboard or a mouse, no. right? And, and this is to me, because when you sit behind your computer screen, your guard, for, for me, at least my guard is up. You know, this is, I, I know I'm not going to click on any links. I got my my virus protection on. I got my, you know, spyware protection on. I got my VPN on. I got, you know, all this stuff on my computer to protect me digitally. But if I'm not aware, if I'm not smart enough to see the threats, I will I'll get got, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, that's 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 the danger of social engineering. Yeah. Right. Um. So how can someone have or be aware enough consistently that they may not fall for the tricks of a, a, a or of a, of a social engineer? How can I protect myself from that? Because that to me, that's, that's too much diligence, right? And, yeah. and, 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 and we, we, as human beings, we don't do this. You know, we're, we're diligent all the time. Sometimes we let our guard down. What do you think is the best path forward that somebody can protect themselves? If if you were talking to your grandmother, tell her, what would you tell? Her? Give her, give me like a, a quick summary of okay. advice that you could give somebody who's not technical. So when, like, give the example of the IT department or someone else. Uh, what you could do is just say, okay, I'm busy right now. I'll give you a call back when I'm ready for you to do whatever. And you hang up with that person. And then you have a number that you know is directly a good number to the IT department. And you call the IT department directly. Don't use the numbers they gave you, but the ones that you have that you know it's good. And then call them and say, hey, I just got a call from someone from the ID department about da da da. Is this true? If they say yes, then okay, you can go through it. If they say no, then, you know, it's a, a uh, social engineering attempt. Um, a lot of times when you get like these either emails or text messages about packaging packages being delivered again don't click on any links don't call any numbers but just have like a bookmark of where you could go in and track packages that you know that you're going to be expecting and if you're not expecting any packages just totally disregard it altogether um i think those are the main things to keep out for when you're doing like the either the calls or the emails is just have good data that you know will get you directly to that person who's pretending to be them so that you know okay is this true they can either verify it or not verify it i know it's an extra step and it may seem kind of tedious but it's really the only 100% way to protect yourself against it. It's just to verify it. It's like what they say, trust but verify. Yeah. Okay. And um, one of the things that, that I see most, a lot of people fall, falling for is that, is that urgency. Yeah. Right? Like, hey, you know, get this done, get this done. It, it's just slow down, you know. Yeah, it, that's it's another thing, slow just down. slow and yeah. think and think real quick that's and, and of course you know it's it, arming yourself with knowledge mm -hmm. right like learn so and just so you have if something like this happens you're like okay this could be that you know i'm not mm -hmm. saying everybody's out to get me but it yeah. could be that what do i have to lose 
if I if I click on that link or if I send give my information out or yeah yeah and 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 going back to the to the Reddit post that we talked about initially, this guy was a troll, right? Mm -hmm. But he didn't he, he didn't put have his guard up nope. because he only had it up when he created that profile. But as he yeah. used that profile, it became redundant. It became the norm, and he started mm -hmm. to use it, and that's how he was found. Hack, yep. And I'm, I'm I'm glad he was. That's, yeah, that's, it's you don't troll really people thing. online, you know. That's no. not a, an act especially like that. if you're a sex offender. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right, right, and and so that's that's good. Um, cool. Well, uh, let's see. Do you have any examples of uh, any famous social engineering attacks that 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 uh, that we? that you may know about, that you read about, that may be interesting, that you want to share? Yeah, um, I think the the best, most famous social engineering is the one where the uh, movie Catch Me If You Can was based on. Okay. <laughs> that guy yeah. used flattery to talk to the secretaries and used a lot of fake checks to get what he wanted and he was very smooth talker and he didn't use any technology at all he mm -hmm. just talked to people gained their trust through saying the right things at the right times okay yeah cool um because i have been uh, studying for Security Plus and I'm listening to uh, a lot of uh, Professor Messer's uh, videos. I remember he mentioned this on, I can find it here. Um, it was a, a Twitter name, a Twitter username um, that was lost. And for the user to get it back, it was $50,000. Mm -hmm. And we just find the exact wording here. Oh, yeah, I think I remember, remember the fit. It was very interesting. Luckily, he was able to get it back without paying. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Here but the way he did it was just basically social engineering. He tricked Twitter into giving him access to it. Okay. So the user, the user's name was Naoki Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. And the username was at N. That's it. Just the letter, yeah, just N. The letter N. That was, yeah. And I think that social, they, they wanted that username for some reason, or it's either they wanted to use it for something or to sell it to someone, yeah. or they wanted to make the money from the person who owns that username. So yeah. what the attacker did is they called PayPal. Okay. Yep. PayPal, big company. But of course, who, who do you talk to when you call PayPal? You call just an average person, just like you and I. Yeah. Right. And then what they did is they used the last four digits of the credit card on file. Right. The, I mean, they used social engineering to get the last four digits of the credit card on file. That's all they did. Mm -hmm. like they, don't, they didn't need anything else. And if you look at your receipt, when you go to the gas station and you use the gas, you use the pump after somebody who didn't pull their receipt. See, you get the last four. Right. And you get card, the yeah. last four digits of the credit card. That's all they needed. Then the attacker after that, they called GoDaddy, another big, huge conglomerate. Mm -hmm. They talked to a person over there, and then they told them, hey, I lost the, I lost my card, um, but to validate, all I have is the last four digits. Can you validate it with the last four digits? Of course, mm -hmm. they use a lot of social engineering. And then, um, and then what they did is they got the first uh, two digits of the card from mm -hmm. GoDaddy. So now they have the last four and first two. And, first two. and then they was they were allowed to keep guessing until they got they got the, the number right. Yep. The rest of it right. So how um how can you do that with you know, allow somebody to give you that many guesses to get us a credit card number? Social engineering. So we talking just like you talked about any of the other mm -hmm. principles that we talked about. Um and now that they have the credit card number they did what's what we call uh, uh, uh domain squatting right now they're in control of yeah. that of that domain 
um, uh, and what, then what they did is they did um, they did uh, this what they, they did um, when they took control of that of that domain name. Mm -hmm. Now they have they went to the user that own, to that owns that n username and said, "Hey, mm -hmm. I own your web your your Website, domain yeah. now. Do you want it, or you want to give me fifty thousand dollars?" You know, so like, no, we'll we'll give it. Give me my domain back, and I'll give you my 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 Twitter user. Twitter user yep. Right now, uh, the owner agreed. Now all Twitter had all all they did is he transferred that number, and and then after that the the um or they transfer the transfer that username, user, okay. and then they reported to Twitter, and then months later, uh, they eventually restored access and and uh she got her or he got his i don't know if it's a he or a she got their yeah. username back yeah but now how much how much work on the social engineer side did it take to get that for what result and then how much work did it take on the victim side to get it, did back. it take yeah. to get it back now is that is it that's what we that's what we talk about the tax that you, that you pay to, <laughs> to be a good to be a good person online right mm -hmm. and and that's that's one of the things that that could have totally been avoided and it's 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 no fault of the of the user right no. it's all the fault of the the representatives or those big companies and sure. if, if they invest in that tra that type of training you know they will be able to protect their 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 users much more because yeah. now we're looking at what who did this affect the, the reputation of GoDaddy the, and the reputation of uh the PayPal, PayPal yep. right? for, for big companies like that so that's 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 another example of how social engineering can be used in in different steps to mm -hmm. take control of something that you own that's yours yeah it, it's simple tricks that they use but they're effective because they use they take advantage of basically humanities like they want to trust people or they just want to do the benefit of the doubt because it's kind of hard to sit there and be critical of every little thing around you because it's like saying okay everyone's off to get me like you'll start to get paranoid and people don't want to live that way so yeah. that's why social engineering really works very well it's because they prey upon the just basically human nature and it's hard right. to defend yourself unless you sit there and just stop and just think over okay what's really going on here is does this really make sense like with the uh, urgencies of this big major deal is only 10 minutes long it's like do you really think that like a thousand dollar product is only going to be 20 bucks it's just something just doesn't smell right here. If it's too good to be true, it probably it is. is. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Um, that's okay. Um, yeah. So just one of just again, like social to me, like social engineering, and and for for anyone who's listening to us, that is that is more technical. Don't. Like we always think of, so oh, this is the easy part. This is the yeah. part that I'll, you know, I, I, I want to learn how to do a penetration testing. I want to know how to exploit vulnerabilities. I want to know how to, you know, pivot and, and do all this stuff. Fine. That's, that's all fine. But for you to get there, for you to even gain access to a network, the easiest way to gain access to a network is to walk into a lobby, say, hey, man, what's the Wi-Fi password? Oh, uh, uh, your public Wi-Fi network is not working. Can I have the password for your internal Wi-Fi network? Or even you worse, know. come in like I have a job interview. Can you print off my resume and give them a USB key or USB drive? <laughs> they plug it in, and now you yeah, own the you whole own computer the system. Yeah. Own the network. Yeah. So. So. It's just very easy to fall for these tricks, and yeah. if you look at a lot of the big major data breaches, a lot of them do start off with social engineering if you really think about it it's like with uh, let's see if i can get see an example um i know with the like with some of the ransomware attacks 
most of those started off with social engineering. They gave an email pretending that they're a customer, like with the pipeline attack. They created an invoice that looked like it was from a customer. They sent it through to whoever. They clicked it open, and then all of a sudden, boom, they were owned. Again, yeah. that's social engineering that allowed them to enter into the a uh, the Sony attacks is another example too. The executives got emails and then they clicked on those email links and then their passwords were compromised and allowed the attackers to go into their networks and then eventually they just owned them and took them down. Yeah. And, you know, and, and this happens because even even if you're being diligent, you'll say, "Oh, this wouldn't happen to me." No, you're no, yeah. you're not special. No, None no, of us is special. special. We're yeah. all human, and we'll all fall for those tricks. Mm -hmm. So now, let's say it happened. I fell. I became a victim of social engineering. I'm mm -hmm. very embarrassed. You know, the, the the thing that I lost the most was my dignity. Um, mm -hmm. How can I recuperate from that? What are the steps that I need to take to undo? um any type of social engineering attack is there is there like is there anything that you can do or you just learn from it and move on i i think it also depends on the attack like if mm -hmm. if it's like they compromised a credit card number you can get a new credit card number but if they compromised your personal identifier information like social security numbers or things like that or more likely not able to recoup from that because you can't change your social security number or if you get your address out there like you have a choice to either move to a new address which some people can't do or just be a little more diligent and not let that out so i think it just depends on what type of information is out there like can you change it change it if you can't change it then you just secure it better okay it's like dip, but um, definitely keep an eye on like identity theft and do like uh credit monitoring like with credit karma or things like that okay and also one one thing i wanted to um just kind of bring uh, bring to your attention is um, and I'm talking about the, the legality of exposing, like if we go back to the video that started mm -hmm. this whole thing, exposing information or bringing to light information that's already out in the public, at least in the United States, is not illegal. No. Um, so, for example, you, you toss your, your, your uh, garbage and somebody does dumpster diving and they go into your, mm -hmm. in your recycling bin and they get your name, address and phone numbers and any yeah, bills that information did. yeah the, nobody owns that information mm -hmm. so that information now is public, public same yeah. thing if you know uh, it's public domain so same thing if you are trolling somebody online and then they find information about you that is publicly accessible and publicly available online and yep. all they're doing and if you talk if you remember our last episode where we had our guest and you know all she did was it was OSINT, right and she said that the, everything that we do is we just gather, you know, collect and organize all the information that's readily available, and we put it in one, one single single, single format, format, right? Yep. That's that's what they're doing. The information is out there in the public. It's open source intelligence. It's open for everybody. It's not illegal for somebody to bring that to light. Um, and honestly, if you're trolling people, I think you deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> you des and you're and you're you're. You're a sex offender. You deserve, and you're a pedophile too. You're not just, you know, yeah. regular. That you know, so you're even ten times worse. Yep. Right. Um, so yeah, the, as far as the legality, you, you have no legal recourse. So yeah, just, just be a nice person. Yeah, be a good person. The That's only you. legality you have is if they post things that are pri like private, not publicly available, like health records or mm -hmm. things like that. That. But That's, stuff like that wouldn't be available. In no, it wouldn't. But right. again, right. Th those are the only recourse you get. But if they like get right. your address, your home address, and or like uh, license plate number, those are 
basically public information and it's it's sad that it's looked at that way but at the same time if you put it out there people are going to find it especially in social media like how many people put their entire lives on either facebook or twitter or whatever and then they get surprised when some random weirdo sees it and say oh comments on it and start stalking them it's like well you kind of put yourself out there by putting all that information publicly so you can't really be surprised when someone finds it yeah cool well that uh that about wraps it up for me man you got anything else to add no i i think this is a really good episode and just be more diligent. Remember, think before you act. And make sure that you have a way to verify whatever claims people are making, especially if they're trying to push you into doing something like right this very second. Yep. So just remember, social engineering is a very simple but effective tool. And it really should be on the radar of everyone to protect themselves. All right. So with that said, this will end this episode and we'll see you in the next one shortly. Right. If you like what was in this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with others. For more information to suggest a topic or to donate, head over to simplecyberdefense.com.